I want to say this this morning. I want you to think on this thought. Praise him until. Praise him until. Psalm 67, we're looking at verse 5. Just for the sake of time, the Bible says this. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Don't miss that little three-letter word, all. Because in the Hebrew text, I want to tell you what it means. It literally means all. Every single one of us. Let all the people praise thee. Then, the Bible says, notice that word then. You probably need to highlight and underline that. Then shall the earth yield her increase, and God, even our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. And may God add the blessings to the reading of his word, and you may be seated uh, as, we, uh, as we look at this, uh, this text, if you will. Um, I can't help but notice that word, all. That's very important this morning. We have this m- church movement that come along years ago, and it was the ideal of having a praise team or a, a praise band. And somewhere in some of our churches along the way, we, we begin to feel like, that uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's their job uh, to, to praise or uh, to bring worship uh, into our sanctuaries. But I just want to tell you, that's not what the Bible says about praising the God in whom owns us and who we belong to. The Bible's very clear that it's each of our responsibilities uh, to, uh, to be a praise team uh, for the Lord. Uh, and so the Bible says all. And I look around and I don't think I have to to jar your memory to get you to see that each and every one of us here, no matter our circumstances, no matter our background, no matter where we may have had to walk already on this Sunday morning, uh, but it's each of our responsibilities to be a praiser uh, or to be a praise team uh, for the Lord above. See, it takes nothing for each of us to give God thanks and to give Him credit uh, and to adore him uh, with our lips day to day. I understand it's not meant for everyone to stand on this stage and hold a microphone and play an instrument. I get that. God uses you where you're at with the gifts that he's given you and the abilities he's given you. But the one thing I know is that we can all praise him. Let me remind you that in the Bible, if you study worship, and you study praise. Now remember that word worship uh, in the Old Testament, it literally means uh, ascribing worthship. Uh, and so whatever the Lord is worth to you, uh, that is how that you are to praise Him. You understand that? Think about that. Uh, and so think about how we worship Him. And we need to ask ourselves, am I worshiping Him according to what He is worth uh, to me? Uh, But in the Bible and in the study of worship in God's Word, you're going to find that worship is, uh, it is taken, it takes place in many different forms. We see at times in the Bible that some people, they raise their hands uh, and worship Him. It's commanded, in fact. Uh, And if you want to find a sure way to be blessed, You do what the Bible has commanded and instructed us to do. And so the next time worship is taking place inside of this church, be the first because he's worth something to you to raise your hands and wait for God to bless you because that's what he said to do is worship him with the raising of hands. Sometimes in the Bible, worship is done by clapping, by putting your hands together and clapping. Sometimes in the Old Testament, worship is done from weeping. Sometimes worship is done from the bowing of the head uh, in prayers and in praises from the heart. And so I get it that just because you're not raising your hands in worship or not just because you're not saying your hallelujahs, that does not mean you're not worshiping the Lord uh, from the depths of your heart. Uh, but I will tell you this, you're going to find out that if you start worshiping Him with your heart, You're going to find out that there will be times when you worship Him with tears. There will be times when your outside can't contain the worship on the inside. And you're going to find yourself raising your hand up and praising the Lord with those that worship Him. 
So God has been good. Now listen. So the Bible says, let all the people praise thee. Now we're going somewhere with this, so just stay with me. Uh, But the Bible says this, and then shall the earth yield her increase, and God, even our own God, will bless us. So let me stop right there and say a few words very quickly about that. I really want to focus on this fact that, uh, that when we praise Him and we all praise Him, that then the earth will yield her increase. I want to focus on that. But I also want you to think just a minute. I'm trying to, I'm trying to draw you back. Uh, sometimes uh, a pastor's job, preacher's job, I should say, uh, is to be uh, one to rebuke you with God's Word. Uh, sometimes he is to be a revealer of God's Word because he's prayed and he's studied and he looks in the Bible and he, and he sees the truth that God reveals to him. And so I'll bring it to you and reveal something to you that maybe you didn't know or, or something that uh, you'd never studied. But other times it's the preacher's role to be a reminder. Uh, and so I want to say a word as far as reminding goes this morning. Let me say this. You remember that in the Bible... Uh, and we, we gather this in our life, that there is that law of disproportionate return. There's that law of disproportionate return. And what that law says is it says that the more that a man is blessed, the more likely he is to be less thankful. The more God blesses us, the more likely we are to be less thankful. Now, I know that's a messed up law, but it is a law. Let me give you an example and then case closed. The rich man eating that filet mignon at his table, surrounded by ivory and gold, is much less thankful for that filet than the beggar is for the crumbs of bread that he receives. You understand what I'm saying? And so that's the law of disproportionate return. The more God blesses us, the less thankful that we are. It shouldn't be that way. It doesn't have to be that way. In fact, that is a law of the natural man. Write that down. That's a law of the natural man. Or it is a law that rules the carnal man. Remember these three types of men sitting here, men and women sitting here this morning. Uh, There's the natural man who's never been saved, never been born again, who does not, who is not dwelt by God, indwelt by God's Spirit. Uh, And then there's a carnal man uh, who, well, he's saved, but he's living in the flesh. Uh, And then there is the spirit-filled man uh, who is ruled by God's Spirit and led by God's Spirit. Well, the natural man and the carnal man, he's not so thankful, not so readily thankful for all that God has blessed him with. I'll tell you this, you go out on the street and you find that homeless man that doesn't have any shoes this morning. And I can promise you he'd be more thankful for a pair of shoes given to him today, almost any pair of shoes given to him today, than you've been thankful for the shoes you wear on your feet right now. Have you even been thankful for the shoes you've wore? You take that man living on that 41, 41st Street in New York City uh, that I was telling you about last week, living in that cardboard uh, box covered in pieces of plastic, surrounded by feces and urine and the smell of alcohol and disease and drugs and all of that kind of stuff. And I promise you this, you put him up in a cheap, cheap hotel and he would be far more thankful than you and I have been this morning for the roof over our head. We traveled down to Mexico where I've told you about before where a friend of ours, uh, he plants churches and starts churches all throughout Mexico and on down into uh, South America now. Uh, but we, if, we, if we went there today and we jumped in on a worship service with a bunch of those believers who have walked for miles and miles and they're gathered under that stretched out old tarp blocking them from uh, that Mexican sun, I tell you this, they'll be a lot more thankful for that than we have been driving in a new car parking in this parking lot and coming in a new sanctuary. You see that law that I'm talking about? I'll never forget one day I went to the hospital. My girls were both very small and 
I, I went to the hospital one day to visit somebody, and I got lost in uh, Mission Hospital over in Asheville. I got lost uh, going up on the elevator, got, got off on the wrong floor, and I thought I knew where I was going, but I didn't. And so when I come off of that floor, I took a right through these double doors, and as soon as I took that right through the double doors, I realized that I had walked into the Billy Graham wing uh, of the hospital, which was the children's wing. And the first thing I saw was a little three-year-old child in a, uh, uh, in a little red wagon. I can't remember what you call those wagons now, but he was in a little red wagon being pulled by a nurse. And the child had an IV bag hanging off of the back of that wagon. And the end of that IV went into the top of his head where he's being treated for cancer. And I'd got up that day and I hadn't even been thankful for my children. Was I thankful? Yes, I was. But had I expressed that thanksgiving both to them and, and mainly to the Lord? Had I, been, had I been thankful for how God had blessed? And, and so this is natural. It's very natural. So I don't stand here and judge and I don't stand here and Bible thump and, and I don't stand here and, and point a finger because this happens naturally. And it happens naturally to the spiritual man. Even if you're a spiritual man, you still get in that carnal state from day to day where you're filled by God's Spirit, you're saved, but you live, you're living life in this fleshly body. So naturally speaking, the more God blesses us, the less we are to be thankful. Man, I want to tell you something. God has blessed us all. And when I look around this church, I see a church full of blessed people. And God help our souls. God help our souls that we get so wrapped up in ourselves, in our life. We get wrapped up in living. We get wrapped up in busyness. And we get wrapped up in activities. And, and we're here and there. And our mind is stretched thin. And our nerves are shot. And, and all of this kind of stuff. And, and that's, that, becomes, that becomes life for us. And in living life, we forget the blessings of the Lord. And man, what I'm doing this morning is, is, is I'm giving a call to, to call you back. Uh, and I know we preached this uh, the Sunday before last, and last Sunday we just give a devotion, and you expressed your thanksgiving. And I realized that all over this church there were people who stood with a microphone, and you give God thanks, and you give God praises for the goodness in His life. I realize that. But what I also realize is, is there's something in this text right here that I want you to see and I want you to get and I want you to become a worshiper. I, I want you to be because, listen, that's what the Father desires. He desires people to worship Him in spirit and in truth. That's what He's looking for. That's what He's seeking this morning. So if you come here and, and you've got a desire in your heart, what can I do for God? Or you're a young person, you're wondering, what can I do for God? I'll tell you what you can do, what we can all do, is we can worship Him today. Is we can, we can uh, fight off this law, this natural law that will come upon us of disproportionate return. And we can ask the Spirit of the living God, the Lord, help me to be thankful for even the slightest of things in my life. Help me, Lord, to be thankful. And help me to praise You. See, that's, that's the difference between thanksgiving and praise. We can be thankful in our heart without ever rendering that thanks. But when we render that thanks to God, we express it unto God, then we begin to praise Him. And we praise Him for who He is. We praise Him for what He's done. But look around your life this morning. Look around your life. And though you have been through some hard times, and though you've been through some valleys, and though you've had dark days, and though where you come from was not such a nice place, look where you're at this morning because of God's grace. And for some of you, look where you chose to live in days gone by. Look at the past that you chose in your yesterdays. Look at the choices that you made uh, in your past. And despite of all of that, God's still been good. And God's still been faithful. And He's worthy of your praise for where you are now. now. Hang on, watch just a minute. And so we see, and so we see this law that governs us if we are not spirit-filled every day. 
Really, I want you to think about something. Think about some of the things you grumble about. Think about some of the things you growl about. And we all do that. We all do that. And then think to yourself, is it really worth the grumble? Is it really worth the growl or should I be thankful for something that this brings into my mind? Think about that. Well, that little word then has got my attention in this text right here. So the Bible says if we, if all of us will praise Him, then shall the earth yield her increase and God, our own God, will bless us. That's, a little, that's interesting to think about for just a moment. Now let's think about this. So the Bible says if we praise Him, the earth's going to yield its increase and God's going to bless us. So what's that mean, the earth's going to yield its increase? Well, basically, what the Bible's just teaching us here is, is that God's going to open up heaven on earth and that all around us there's going to be a blessing. Okay, now watch. So now we've now we got to get out of the mind of the natural man or the carnal man for a moment. And we've got to start thinking with the mind of a spiritual man. And the spiritual man thinks through the lens of the Bible. And so we've got to start thinking just for a moment about about when we praise Him. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you when we usually praise Him as a natural man or a carnal man. We usually praise Him when God's done something big for us. That's usually when we'll praise Him and thank Him. We'll, we'll usually praise Him when the, the doctor had called last week and said it doesn't look good, uh, and then he calls back this week and says, Hey, good news, the newest test we've done uh, says everything is good and all is clear. We'll praise Him for things like that, and we should, and we should. Usually, though, our praise is limited to times uh, whenever we're, we're wondering where the money's going to come from to pay that bill. Now, let me stop right there and say this. It's been a long time since some of you remember those days. God's blessed you so much, you don't even know the last time you had to worry about God paying the bill. That's something to be thankful for, my friend. It's not a sin to be blessed by God, and financially, that's not a sin. What's a sin is if you worship that money instead of the giver of that money. So that's not a sin. But some of you need to stop and you need to remember way back when, way back when, you struggled about how you're going to pay a bill. And then God, you go to the mailbox one day and the Lord has miraculously provided in some unexpected way. Usually about all of us. We'll give Him glory for times like that. And we'll thank Him for that. And we should, don't get me wrong, but most of the time in the carnal man and the natural man's life, what it takes is, is some big miraculous deliverance of God in our life before we'll ever even speak up or worship Him and say, thank you, Lord, for what you just did. But I want to tell you what the Bible's very clear right here about is. I notice in this text that there's no circumstance that is set forth before the, before the Lord through His Word and tries to invoke us to praise Him. In other words, what I'm saying is he doesn't say, when I've sent the money to pay that bill, let all the people praise me. He doesn't say that. He doesn't say, when I give you a clean bill of health, let all the people praise thee. He doesn't say, when everything is good with the 401k, when everything's good with the job and the career, when everything's good at the office, then let all of the people praise me. He doesn't say when you wake up and you feel good in the mornings, let all the people praise me. He, he, doesn't, say, uh, he, he doesn't say whenever a goodness is abounding in your life, when you're walking on mountaintops, when darkness is not chasing you or depression is not present in your life, he doesn't say when you're just so happy and let all the people praise me. No, he doesn't say that. See, he doesn't put any circumstances out there. All he says is, is let all the people praise me. And if you'll praise me, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to open heaven up on earth. I'm going to pour it out in, our midst, in your midst. I'm going to let you live in the goodness and the favor of God. 
You're going to find that you're a blessed, you have a blessing on the left hand and on the right hand. And as he told Abraham, and not only are, am I going to bless you, but you're going to be a blessing to everybody that comes in contact with you. I'm going to bless you so much that whoever is around you or near you, they are going to be blessed. So there's no circumstances outlined and defined. And, and he doesn't say, you know what? If you're having a real bad day, don't, don't really worry about praising on that day. You, you know, if the, bot, if the rug has been jerked out from under you in life, don't, don't, I'm, don't praise on that day. I'm not thinking about that, the Lord said. No, he didn't say that. If you've got a great burden and prayer need in your life and it's about to kill you because you prayed about it and you prayed about it and you prayed about it and it seems there's no answer in heaven. Then the Lord doesn't say, hold off on your praise for a little while. Don't, don't thank him yet because you've got problems right now that you need to, to deal with and pray over. No, no, he doesn't say that. He just says in a blanket statement, let all the people praise me. And if you'll praise me, then I'm going to open up heaven on earth and I'm going to pour out goodness and favor and blessing and not only will I bless you and you'll be a blessing, but you're going to bless others that are around you. In fact, I'm going to tell you one of the greatest things you can ever do is find somebody that's being blessed by God and get yourself around them. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Stop, stop, stop hanging around and being with those people who doesn't have the hand of God or the blessings of God upon them and find somebody that God, God is blessing and take them to lunch. Just get around them. Just be near them. Because I promise you this, find someone God is blessing, and if you get near them, the blessings of God's going to roll off on you. And then it's going to roll off on your children. It's going to roll off on your grandchildren. But listen, what's taking place in this text is here. It's a clear direction that if we want God's hand and if we want God's heaven poured out upon us, then we have got to praise him. So now again, let's go from the natural man and the carnal man to the spirit-filled man. So the natural man and the carnal man, and again, I'm not pointing fingers or Bible thumping here, but I just I understand what it's like to be the natural man and the carnal man. Uh, and, and so what the natural man and the carnal man does this, a great burden has come upon us. It keeps us awake at night. It causes us anxiety and makes us bite our fingernails. And you know what we do? Well, we, we leave off praising because that's just not natural. It's not natural to hit your finger with a hammer and say, thank you, Jesus. If you do that, come up here and let me punch you in the nose and let's see how you react and what you say. That's just not natural. And so it's not natural when we're burdened. It's not natural when we're grieving. It's not natural when we have this great weight of the world upon us to want to praise the Lord. But what is natural, what is natural is, is for us to focus on that hurt is for us to focus on that pain, is for us to focus on that, um, that, that discouragement or that darkness. It's very natural for us to focus on it, even if we're focusing on it in prayer. It's very natural for us to pour our energy and our effort into focusing on that burden. That's just what we do. It's natural. And for the saved man, it's carnal. It's very carnal. It's letting our body rule our spirit. Or letting this human mind rule uh, Bible truth. And so, that's why the Bible says here, let all the people, let all, not the ones who are having good days, not the ones who are walking in God's goodness, uh, not, the one, not, not just the ones that are, uh, are receiving the favor of God, but I want all the people. I want those who are discouraged to praise me. I want those who are in a battle to praise me. I, I want those who are carrying burdens so big that it's got them broken over and pressed down. I want that individual uh, to praise me. And the Lord says, then, then if you will praise me, I'm going to pour heaven out upon earth. I'm going to bless you and everything around you and everyone around you. And I'll let you be a blessing to people all over the world, the Bible says. But I want everyone to praise my name. And so listen to me this morning. I know someone's here today without a doubt because I've, I've certainly been in this place many, many times. Just Wednesday night, preaching through the miracles of Jesus, we preached on one of the storm stories. 
And, and, and I express how my thankfulness for the Lord putting those storm stories in the Bible because it lets me know that, hey, yeah, life is full of storms. And, and so I may not be there now, but I know I'll be there tomorrow. But for that individual that's here this morning, and you're carrying that great burden and you're carrying that great weight, let me ask you something. How much time have you devoted to that great burden and that great weight? How much energy have you poured in uh, to that, that great burden and that great need in your life versus praising God? even though you're in that storm or you're carrying that great burden. Listen to me. Let me ask you this. There's some truths, fundamental truths that we believe about God, but one of those is, is that He's, um, he's all-knowing. He's omniscient. Do you believe He's an all-knowing God? Say amen this morning. He's an all-knowing God. So if He's an all-knowing God, you need to know this. He knows very well. We talked about this Wednesday night as well as he sent the disciples into the, onto the sea. He knew there was a storm coming. He didn't need Doppler radar. He didn't need Fox 21 weather report coming across his uh, phone. He knew a storm was coming, but he sent them out anyway. Listen, God knows what you're going through. He knows what you're going through. And, and, and so the length of time and the length of energy that you spend pouring in uh, to that burden and that need, listen, that is not what influences God in heaven to move uh, upon that situation. Yeah, you're supposed to pray about things. Yes, you're supposed to labor about things. Sometimes you're supposed to fast about things. And I want you to know God knows where you're at. But He also knows how you're blessed, even though you may be in a battle or be in a storm, or carry a burden. And he also knows that he's given you these instructions. Let all the people praise him. Let all the people praise him. Because if you do, if you do, then I'm going to open up heaven upon earth, and I'm going to pour down goodness and pour down favor. So listen to me this morning. Elizabeth, you can come. You, you can wail and you can weep and you can cry and you can roll around and you can cut yourself with pieces of glass. Uh, you, can, uh, you can do all these things trying to get the attention of God into heaven, of God in heaven. But, but I want you to know something. You don't have to do all those things. Because there's one thing in the Bible I'm very sure of. And that one thing is this is that if you praise Him, because I have the Word, I'm looking at the Word of God right now, if you praise Him, then, then God's going to put His touch upon your life and upon everything around you. I know that from the Word of God right there. The Bible says then, then, He's going to bless the earth. The earth will give its increase. He's going to bless you. Then, the Bible says. You remember my grandpa, he was born in 1921. Kind of come up there in the, in the midst of the Great Depression. One day he and I were working in the garden and he was spraying something on some of his crops. He shared with me, he said, you know what? He said, when I was a kid, years ago, and then as a young man, Dropped out of school in fourth grade to work on the farm, support his family. He said, used to be we didn't have all these pestilences and diseases. He said, used to be you'd grow a garden, you didn't have to spray anything on it. Not one single thing. And I just couldn't believe that. You try to raise tomatoes today, you're going to spray them with at least two or three different kinds of spray just to get a good tomato out of it. But listen just a moment. It was a different place back then. A different place. See, God had brought America through, well, the Great Depression and the World War and another World War. And America was a nation that was humbled before an almighty God in heaven. And after the, after the war ended in the 40s, America saw an age of prosperity and advancement like she's never seen in her history. It was really leaps and bounds during those 20 and 30 years after World War II. But you know what? America was thankful. So, so thankful. And we're different today as a nation. As a nation, we're not thankful and we're not grateful. 
As a nation, to be honest with you, we got a nation full of brats. Entitled brats who thinks that the world owes them everything and they don't want to give nothing or do nothing to receive a blessing theirself. Don't let that attitude creep inside our churches and in our lives. But let us be thankful. So listen to me. If you this morning are carrying that burden, if you this morning have that struggle, if you this morning are biting your nails about something, if you this morning are, are you feel... You feel the heat of hell raging around you. You are in such torments in this battle that you're facing. This burden that you carry. This need that you have. Absolutely pray about those things. You should. You better. He cares. He wants to know. But then also you've got to have faith to know that He knows where you're at. He knows how you feel. He knows every thought going through your mind. Even if your closest friend does not know, God knows exactly where you're at. He's got His hand upon you. He's with you. He's never left you nor forsaken you. But for a little while this morning, I want to ask you, I want you to try something. I want you to try the Word of God this morning. And I want you to lay aside your uh, fleshly thoughts. I want you to lay aside the natural man or the carnal man and I want you to say, Lord, I'm going to do something that the spirit-filled man should do. I'm going to try something this morning, Lord. Lord, I'm going to stick with your word today. And God, you know my need. God, you know how I'm broken this morning, though I've got a smile on my face. I'm faking it today. God, you know the condition of my, you know the darkness that hovers over me. But God, despite all that, I'm going to do your word today. And Father, I'm going to be one of the ones who is all of your people. And I'm just going to go ahead. And for every little thing that I can think of today, I'm going to praise you. If you can't praise him for nothing else this morning, listen to me. You ought to praise Him for His Word today because on this day He's brought you a promise that is a key to your answered prayer. It's a key to your deliverance. It's a key to your victory. If only you would praise Him as He's commanded you to do so. And so... And so watch this. Watch this. And so, yeah... You come in here this morning, you don't feel like praising. Hey, I know, I've been there. Okay? The last thing you want to do is to hold a microphone and say, well, I thank the Lord for this, or I thank the Lord for that. Because you're just not feeling it today. Well, I got news for you, according to the Word of God. You don't have to feel it. You just got to do it. You just got to do it. And so you don't have to be all wrapped up and consumed in the Spirit of God to be moved to worship this morning and to praise Him. God's already said it. He's given you your spirit if you're saved and a child of God. And all you got to do is start doing it. And when you start doing it, then you're going to see the Spirit's going to take over because you've yielded yourself to the Spirit. Now listen, whatever we yield ourselves to is what we become a slave to. If we yield ourselves to the flesh, if we yield ourselves to burden, if we yield ourselves to complaint or to grief or to heartache or to darkness, then we'll become a slave to that. But if we yield ourselves to God's Spirit, then we'll become a slave to the Spirit of God. So yield yourself by the Word of God to the Spirit of God and determine this morning, you know what, I've got needs. I could weep in that altar all day long over the needs in my heart and in my life. But today on this day, I'm going to praise Him until... And praise Him till the darkness vanishes. Praise Him till the check comes in the mail. Praise Him till the doctor calls back with a good report. Praise Him until anxiety leaves you. Praise Him until the goodness of God surrounds you. Praise Him until favor pours over you. Praise Him until there's an anointing on your praise. Because you've obeyed the Word, the Spirit has moved you, and out of your heart comes the abundance of praise to our own God in heaven. So I wonder if there'd be somebody in this church today who would say, Lord, you know my heart. And Lord, you know I don't feel it today. I'm heavy today, Lord, you know that. Lord, you know what's killing me on the inside. I'm dying a death a day. But Lord, despite all those things, I've got your word. 
And as one of your children, I'm going to listen to your word. Listen to me, one of my regrets in life, and I close with this, is that I didn't listen to my mom and daddy more when I was young. I didn't. I was rebellious. I was hard-headed. I was stubborn. And really, above all else, I was selfish. I wanted my own way. And I didn't listen to nothing that mom and daddy said to me. I regret that today. Terribly regret that. But when the Father says to you, let everybody praise me, don't live with the regret of not praising Him when you could. 